Crash is a 2022 American dark comedy thriller movie directed by Mimi Cave. It stars Daisy Edgar Jones and Sebastian Stan. The plot revolves around a young woman who begins dating a charismatic man only to discover his heinous true nature. The movie was released on March 4, 2022 on Hulu by Searchlight Pictures. It received generally positive reviews from critics. This is Everything Horror. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe. The movie begins with Noah going on a date with a man named Chad, who clearly lacks basic human decency. He is rude to the waitress and criticizes Noah for her dressing sense. He is also very unhygienic as when he packs the leftovers, we see his car dipping into the food. Noah has had enough of him and when he asks her out for a second date, she politely declines. This is when he morphs into a total loose bag. Okay. Good luck finding a guy, you stuck up bitch. Um this is pretty much the first 10 minutes of the movie where we actually get to experience how terrible her dating life is. Noah also has a best friend named Molly. One day a man named Steve flirts with Noah at a local supermarket. They meet ironically enough in the fresh vegetable section of the store. They eventually exchange phone numbers. Noah tells Molly about the supermarket episode and how she didn't believe people actually met in the real life anymore. So meeting Steve was quite a nice experience. One day, Steve asks her out on a date. The two seem to have a lot in common, like less family and friends and dead parents. Yeah. Perfect. Great. Let's cheers to that. <laughs> Steve tells that he is a plastic surgeon. They eat and chat and have a good time. The two seem to struck it off right away and they get intimate by the end of their date. The next day, Noah shares about his experience with Molly, who then asks for his socials, to which Noah replies that he is not on any form of social media. Molly jokingly warns her that that is a huge red flag and to be cautious. That's, that's shady. I'm sorry. Red flag. Okay. Noah shrugs it off. and goes about her day with Steve eating talking and having fun after several dates Steve invites Noah for a weekend breakaway alone with him a mini vacation to a secluded place in Cottage Grove Oregon Noah goes to the trip against the advice of her best friend Molly Noah spends the overnight at Steve's luxurious house before departing early the next day for the secluded cottage later the two share a cocktail Steve drugs Noah's drink forcing her to pass out we have now hit the 33 minute mark into the movie and that's when we get to see the opening titles i think this was very cleverly placed this signifies that everything we have seen and learned about steve's character in the movie will turn upside down and the movie will really truly begin noah wakes up in captivity chained to the ground she starts crying and yelling when steve reveals his ulterior motives I'm gonna sell you me. People pay me a lot of money for it. I'm not. I'm not gonna kill you. Uh, right away, because the fresher the meat, the better. So. He harvests women's body parts and sells them to his elite clients for consumption. He adds that he will keep her alive for as long as possible in order to keep her meat fresh. Then we see a video montage of how Steve does what he said he does, and I'll just show you some quick, very short clips of that as it is pretty gruesome and not for the faint of the heart. Also, along with the meat, he combines a goodie bag filled with the victim's personal belongings and photos as a special service to his clients. While in captivity, Noah befriends another victim of Steve named Penny, who is trapped in an adjacent room. And just like Noah, she also has not many people looking for her, which made her a perfect target for Steve. Meanwhile, Molly is now concerned about Noah's whereabouts. Noah has not made any contact whatsoever from the moment she left for the weekend getaway, and this was raising suspicion. Steve, posing as Noah, replies to the messages Molly has sent, but she is still very dubious about the responses. Upon putting up the photo received from Noah's phone on Google reverse image search, 
it turns out that it was just a random photo from the internet. Molly has had enough now and begins investigation with the help of her friend Paul, a bartender who by coincidence served Noah and Steve drinks on their first date. Molly makes an online search and learns that Steve is actually a man called Brendan who is married to a lady named Anne. They also have children together. Believing he is having an affair, Molly visits Anne and informs her of her suspicions. Brendan appears during their conversation and when queried by Molly denies any involvement with Noah. As she gets up to leave the room, Molly dials Noah's number which begins to ring in Brendan's pocket. But before she could make a move, Anne, who is now disclosed to be Brendan's partner in crime, knocks Molly out cold. And just like that, Molly also falls victim to Steve's disgusting line of work. After a while, we see Steve thanking Anne for the good teamwork and it is revealed that Anne has a prosthetic leg. Weird, right? We'll talk about it more towards the end of the video. Next, we see Noah requesting Steve if she can take a shower. He allows that and she takes this opportunity to check the surroundings, looking for ways to escape. She makes a failed attempt at escaping as she gets easily overpowered by Steve and as a punishment, he drugs her and removes chunks of meat from her butt. Sounds gross and terrifying, right? Yeah, please do not look it up online. During a conversation with Penny, she tells Noah that none of the other girls has slept with Steve, at least none that she knows of. This disgust and shocks Noah as to why Steve decided to sleep with her. Maybe he likes her. That's really twisted given what Steve's real motives are. Anyways, in one of the magazines, a former captive has left a message. If you are reading this, it means he likes you. You use it. Keep fighting. This was enough to churn the wheels in Noah's mind. She starts taking interest in Steve's profession to get in his good books, questioning him about his line of work and whether he enjoys consuming human meat. So one day, he invites Noah on a dinner date and presents to her spaghetti and human meatball to satisfy her curiosity. He also adds that this meal would normally cost $30,000. Half-heartedly, she ingests it somehow only to later throw it up all as soon as she gets back to her cell. We also get more insight into Steve's character. He started eating human flesh at the age of 19 and there was no stopping for him from that point on. He liked how it made him feel. He felt different and powerful and soon was able to find a small community of people who felt the same way. At this point, Steve has kind of started trusting Noah and so he invites her again to a special romantic dinner and even gets her a pink dress. Of course, it has to be pink in a movie about meat. He feeds her liver from a girl named Melissa and breast from Molly as we see him performing surgery on her a night before. Noah eats it all and starts crying that she should feel awful for what she is doing, but she is not. She is in fact enjoying this. This was enough to win Steve's trust and he calms her down by telling her that it is alright, she is just different and there is nothing wrong with that. Noah's manipulation tactics were clearly working. He even shows her how he preserves the belongings of his victims. Then we see them dancing and getting close, which eventually lead things to the bedroom. Noah pretends to go down on Steve and trust me, although predictable, this was the best thing to happen in the entire movie. She bites his off, leaving Steve behind in agonizing pain. Noah makes her run for it, but not before she rescues Penny and Molly. While escaping, the three run into Steve in the kitchen where Molly kicks him and bashes his head with a meat mallet allowing the girls to escape outside. Steve, still following closely, attacks Noah with a gun. The girls manage to finally defeat him with Noah seizing the gun and shooting Steve dead. They start looking for a way out when Noah suddenly remembers that she left her phone near Steve's body and goes to get it back. Then we see Anne arriving at the house looking for Steve, only to find his dead body in the woods. She also finds a collection of personal stuff belonging to both him and Noah. She understands that Steve has been cheating on her with Noah. Anne then encounters Noah in the woods who came back to get her phone. Anne pretends to be a captive too and thanks Noah for killing Steve off. She then gets close to Noah and tries to strangle her. But Molly comes in and saves the day by smashing Anne to death with a shovel. Molly is literally the best friend we all need but maybe we do not deserve. 
Anyways, as Noah and Molly sit down by a tree to take a breather, Noah's phone screen lights up with a text message from the man she went out with at the beginning of the movie. And the movie ends. Okay, let's talk about the central theme of the movie. I feel that the movie shows the current scenario in the dating culture. Like how easy and convenient it has become to get access to n number of people through dating apps and social media in a fraction of a second. But at the same time, how awkward and brutal it can be when you face those people in real life situations. Also, I think the movie takes a jab on the fast growing hookup culture. Like how people are just interested in you for mere physical needs or bodily desires. And there is no actual emotional connect there. Literally using you like a piece of meat. Also, I want to talk about Anne. We know that she is Steve's wife and his accomplice. We saw that she has a prosthetic leg and that's it. Like no mention is ever made about it again anywhere in the movie. So the audiences can only make assumptions at this point. I believe that Anne might have been a former captive of Steve. And maybe she got curious about Steve's profession and after getting a taste of it, like quite literally, she wanted in on it. Or maybe, maybe she actually started liking him. Damn you Stockholm Syndrome. So that's when they got married and had kids and you know, went on about their lives. Lastly, I want to talk about the clients of Steve. Like who potentially could these people be? Throughout the movie, there are several subtle imagery of satanic symbols all over the place. Also, we never get to see the faces of these clients. All we know is that they are super filthy rich, secretive and have a fucked up fondness of human flesh. The only guess I could make here is that these people are a part of maybe some fucked up elite satanic secret society. Not taking any names though, so please do not come for me. Okay, that's it. So let's wrap it up for today. And I'll see you again very soon. So bye-bye.